morning, friends. Greetings and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day in The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation over the last... 33 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like acne, psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, biology, standard operating procedure, because the human biological system is a healing system. It's a regenerating system. It is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis. And while some folks may call that a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, you've come to the right place. We welcome your calls on the bright side. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you have questions about the Longevity products, Longevity business, you can find out uh, you can find out more about our Longevity products at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team off the websites brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com, or call 866-735-2470 for more information. Also, would like to remind you to please check out our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com. We've got new products coming out here probably next week on truthtreatments.com. We've got a blog post. And also, if you like us on Facebook and uh, follow us on Instagram, you'll have access to our Instagram Lives and Facebook Lives. Facebook stays up for a while. Instagram goes away after 24 hours. I try to do them on a somewhat regular basis, and they're always packed with good information about how to take care of your skin. There's so many misunderstandings and non-understandings about how we take care of our skin. No surprise, there's so many misunderstandings and non-understandings about how we take care of our bodies in general, how we take care of our lives in general. This is our theory of the case. This is what's happening as we see it here on the bright side. We're sicker than ever. Physical and mental, uh, physical health and mental health markers are all dropping. We're living shorter. Our longevity is dropping. And we can't medicalize our problems away. The good news is, is we have power. The bad news is, is if we buy into the memes, we're going to lose our power. Yesterday, if probably some of you guys watched the debate. I watched that Democratic debate. I watched both of them. And just as I predicted, everybody's going to, is all about health care for, for uh, Medicare for all. And the big argument is, should you keep your private insurance or should it be, should you have Medicare? But everybody thinks they drug, drug prices are too expensive. Bernie Sanders wants to drop drug prices by half. And he sounds like a good guy. and Everybody cheers. Well, it reminds me of how we, the Stockholm syndrome which is where people, when people get kidnapped, they end up falling in love with their kidnappers. People fall in love with their abusers. Oh, the pharmaceutical industry loves us. They love us. They, they, the, pharma, the, the drug companies want to make sure that we are really, really healthy. They've got all this wonderful stuff. Actually, they don't love us. That, that's not the meme. The meme is that they have all these wonderful drugs, but they're holding out on us. And they're making us pay a lot of money for this, these wonderful drugs. That's the meme. The meme is the, meme is the drug companies are, are evil, but not because uh, their wares are evil, what they're producing is evil, but because they're charging us too much for what they produce. It's a really sneaky mind, you know what. It gets you to think that the drug companies have these hidden cures for you. And they never say cures, but the implication is there. The implication is that you're going to be better off when you take your drug and you're being deprived of your high blood pressure drug and that's going to kill you. Well, how about if we practice some SDR breathing? That'll lower your blood pressure. That's free. Now, I'm not saying Bernie Sanders is, you know, doing this 
or any of them are doing it in an evil sort of way. They're just ignorant, like most people, not present company excluded. If you're listening to this program, the Republicans are going to do the same thing. They're, you know, they're going to have, they're going to have the same kind of some sort of health care system and with free medicine and free whatever. Bernie Sanders actually quoted Canada yesterday, and I always get a, the Canadian example. Uh, I always get a kick when people quote Canada or, or point to Canada as a as a uh, an, a, a paragon of what's what is possible when you have health care. It is a paragon of what's possible, but not in a good way as my friends in Canada know. Everybody takes drugs because they're free. Everybody interacts with the medical model because it's free. It's much harder to get nutrition. It's much harder. In fact, Longevity had a big problem. They still have a problem getting all their nutritional supplements into Canada, but you can get your drugs for free. And that's just what, what the government health care is going to do because you got lobbyists and you got corporate interests. And, I mean, it's a, it's a nasty system. And even people who are against mon big money in politics don't have a problem saying that the government should get involved in, uh, in, in somehow in bed with the drug industry and the insurance industry and the health industry. Anyway, the message here is we have power. I don't want to dwell on the bad stuff. The message here is we have power by learning how to leverage our lifestyle choices. And if you're sick and you think you've tried everything, that's the wrong attitude. You got to keep looking. You got to keep trying. You got to keep fine tuning. You got to keep refining. When you, the good news is, is when you start to apply the principles correctly, you, you'll get results and quickly. I call it the STAR system. S-T-A-R, STAR. It's an acronym. It stands for Strategy, Tools, Application, Results. Strategies. You always want to start off with a strategy. I can tell when somebody, a lot of times people send me emails where they have a list of all the supplements they're taking and there's no strategy. It's just a whole bunch of supplements. Because this guy told them this, and this commercial said that, and this doctor suggests this, and this neighbor says that, and they just kind of cobble together a bunch of supplements, and there's no rhyme or reason to it. You always want to start with a strategy. The triangle of disease is, your, is a strategy, or applying the triangle of disease is a strategy. Start with the digestive system, work to the blood sugar system, calm the body down. Use nutritional supplementation. Make sure you're eating less food. These are all parts of a strategy of calming the body down so it can rebuild itself. The body doesn't build when it's under duress. The body doesn't build when it is uh, deficient. Just say duress. When the body's under duress, it conserves its resources. This is so important. When the body it feels like it doesn't have enough of, enough of what it needs to grow, it, it, calm, it, it slows down. It down-regulates. My favorite word in biochemistry is up-regulate. That's what you're looking for. You've got to have a strategy that up-regulates, and you do, you, your, your uh, strategy is going to take, in, take into account two directions, the bad stuff and the good stuff. And I know that's being simple, but that's basically what it is. Bad stuff out, good stuff in. Your tools, nutritional supplementation, foods, your body itself via breathing and movement, application, you do it in a balance of of rest with stress, with stimulation, I will say stimulation and rest, stress being a kind of stimulation. The stress itself is not a problem. It's the stress without, that does not exist in a context of rest. Stress is your friend if it's within a context of rest. A little bit of stress and a lot of rest. So your strategy is going to be to nutriate, to move, to oxygenate, Extra rest, your techniques, your tools, I should say, are going to be suppl supplements, foods, the body itself, the mind itself. Application is going to be in a yin-yang fashion where you put a little bit of duress on the system and then a lot of rest. And the beautiful thing about the STAR system, no matter what it is, you'll always, always, always get results. Start with a strategy, a recipe. A strategy is like a recipe. I can't bake chocolate chip cookies, but I can bake the best chocolate chip cook cookies that ever, that the greatest chocolate chip cookie chef on the planet can bake if I have a recipe. That's why you always want to start off with a direction, something you're trying to accomplish. It's true about anything. A strategy is a guideline, a menu, not a menu, a formula or a recipe. In the lab, I always start off with a recipe or a formula when I'm, when I'm making a product. I always start off writing down the formula. That's my strategy, formula. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll continue on the bright side right after this. Okay, we are back 
on the bright side. I'm pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number, 844-236-6010. Got lots of lines open for you. We'll get to your calls in our next segment. We're on the air Monday through Friday on the bright side, 8 to 9 Pacific, 10 to 11 Central Time, and 24-7 on our archive page at brightsideben.com. Also, uh, we've got a blog and uh, YouTubes and videos, and just if you just Google Pharmacist Ben, you'll get all kinds of stuff on the web. I've been doing videos and interviews since, uh, oh my goodness, probably for 10 years now. There's all kinds of stuff out there. Some stuff is, uh, 10 years is a long time. That's, uh, there's a lot of stuff out there from how I was. It's interesting to see yourself on video from, from 10 years ago. In any case, Google Pharmacist Ben or go to PharmacistBen.com or BrightSideBen.com or CriticalHealthNews.com. I also have a new website coming up, TruthNourishment.com with various products that uh, I like that you can't get anywhere else or are hard to find. And I just like them. And I think that they're, uh, they can help a lot of folks. So I just put them on my website. Yeah, that's TruthNourishment.com. Thank you to Robert Lundgren for setting that up. All right. So we've been talking about some of these techniques, these uh, ideas a lot of mental ideas, beliefs involving beliefs and tool, uh, uh, mind strategies or lifestyle, let's just say lifestyle strategies for, for staying healthy. That's really what this program is about. It's about using lifestyle strategies to stay healthy. It's tools for having a really powerful, effective life. That's, I, I, I consider myself more of a motivational speaker than a nutritionist. I want to I wanna motivate people, not just about health, but about life. There's a really cool website, by the way, called medium.com. Me, uh, medium, just like it sounds, M-E-D-I-U-M.com. Uh, it's got kind of interesting articles. This is an article I caught this morning. You must open your mind to see the hidden layers of reality. An open mind is not limited by fear. Quote, there are many layers to reality other than the physical, temporal, mental, and emotional. These layers have become hidden through our choice of beliefs. It is therefore us that has come to hide from them through not focusing upon them, on these beliefs. We hide from our beliefs. We don't want to see our responsibility, our mental responsibilities for how our life shows up. And this, uh, if we do happen to perceive one of these layers, continuing on in this article, if we do happen to perceive one of these hidden layers, we have powerful mechanisms that tell us we did not perceive what we think we just did. These mechanisms operate through fear. The fear drives our ability to quickly and effectively ignore or dismiss what we do not understand, present company excluded. You have to have an open mind to what you do not understand. You have to be willing to explore the hidden layers. If you're sick on the surface, there's a hidden layer that's driving it. As Quantum Jeff told us, hello Quantum Jeff, assume you're listening, he said the, the uh, Visible world always comes from the invisible world. In the world of health, where you see the illness is not where the illness begins. In the world of skin, where you see uh, the, the problem on your skin is not where the problem begins. This is, a, this is a fundamental pillar, a fundamental principle in healing. Where you see the problem is not where the problem begins. It's like a leaf in a tree. The classic example is leaves on a tree. The problem on the leaf doesn't start at the level of the leaf. The cause of the leaf problem is not on the leaf. It's in the root, and it's in the trunk. It's in the tree. If you want to be healthy, you've got to go to the trunk, the tree, the trunk, and ideally the root. And the root is always going to involve, at least, it may, it may actually be the direct cause of some kind of mental or, or me, a belief system, some kind of mental, uh, bad mental idea or bad idea. Before we went to break, I was telling you about the STAR system. Strategy, tools, application, results. You start with a strategy, whatever you want to accomplish. If you have a symptom, rest assured you got a problem. Your strategy should be, how am I going to reduce that symptom without drugs? If you can reduce that symptom, then you know you've addressed the problem. That's why fasting is so important. Fasting, for the most part, will reduce inflammatory sim symptomology especially inflammatory symptomology that is periodic, that comes and goes. If you have inflammatory or pain symptoms that come and go, fasting is, the, is an ideal strategy. Calming the body down is an ideal strategy. Fasting is a tool or a technique. How do you fast? I, I get this question all the time. How do you fast? You stop eating. That's how you fast and drink water and stop for a day. Or at least maybe if you can't do water, a tiny little bit of celery juice. Celery juice is an amazing fasting aid because of the nitrogen. Nitrogen gives you power that has nothing to do with calories 
Oh, yeah, oxygen's the same way. Oxygen gives you power that has nothing to do with calories. So you start, your strategy is going to be to find, that, find the, uh, a way to reduce the symptom. Fasting is the best way to do it. The strategy is going to be to calm the body down. That's what we're really talking about is relaxing the body, allowing the body to stand down. Illness is a defensive response. Illness is based in defensive responses. When you calm the body down, you basically are telling the immune system, the, the, the defensive system, to stand down. We Praise God we have an immune system, but the problem is, is our, because of how we constructed our society and our culture at this point in history, our immune systems are constantly jacked up. So anything you could do to calm the body down, that's the first part of your strategy. And then you want to put the good stuff in. That's the second part of the strategy. Make sure you get your nutrients. Make sure you get food, quality food, nutrient-dense food, and not a lot of it. Calories down, nutrition up. Calorie restriction, optimum nutrition, the cron diet, they call it. Your tools are going to be supplements, good foods. How do you apply the tools? On and off. Stimulate, relax. Stimulate, relax. You eat a little bit, you lay off food for a long period of time, or a relatively long period of time. And the beautiful thing about the STAR system, as TAR, you'll always get results. Always, always, always. Work with food, nutrition, respiration, the digestive system, movement, relaxation, positive thinking, positive emotions, spirituality. You can throw in uh, forest bathing, or at least staying out in nature, service to your fellow man and woman, and dogs, and pets, and animals, service. Just the act of service activates the parasympathetic nervous system, the relaxation nervous system. Gratitude, don't forget gratitude, grace. There's an interesting religious or theological connection between being saved and grace. We're saved by grace. Well, guess what? Saved means safe. Grace means parasympathetic. You're safe when you activate the parasympathetic nervous system because that's your safety nervous system. Service and gratitude are safety and parasympathetic. It's all, you know, this is not airy-fairy. This is all based in biochemistry. Love, oxytocin, safety, visualization. You know, High-performance athletes, NFL football players, NBA basketball players, Major League Baseball players, Olympic athletes, visualization is a key component of their, of their training. Visualization is part of their success. All high-powered athletes use visualization. What does that tell you? That means to perform, if you want to, if you, uh, want to perform at a high level, you visualize. Learn to visualize. It's so important. There's a really cool book, I don't remember the name of the author, but the book is called Creative Visualization. Get it. If you're sick, get it. If you have cancer, there's so many, so much literature on visualization improving cancer symptoms. It, it reversed, there's even, I've even read stuff about visualization being involved, I don't know if directly cured anybody, but be involved in curing spontaneous remissions. What do you think a spontaneous remission is, by the way? It's the body curing itself, and they happen. Frequently enough that they're in the literature, and if it can happen to one person, it can happen to anybody. Spontaneous remissions. Cancer just disappears. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. Got lines open. We'll be back on the bright side right after this. Right side. I'm Pharmacist Ben, and we've got lines open for you at 844-236-6010. We'll get your calls in just a moment if you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, something you may have heard about or read about, or if you just have a comment or a success story, or you just want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number. I'm reading a book called The Meme Machine by Susan Blackmore. It's kind of it's a little bit of a, a scientific uh, she, uh, Susan Blackmore is a physicist, is a uh, a uh, philosopher, and I think she might also be a biologist. But she writes a lot of ph philosophical books, and she, she writes uh, about the analogy between memes and genes. And she says, or she asks the question anyway. She doesn't she doesn't draw a conclusion, but she asks a question. She's an evolutionary biologist, I guess. Uh, she uh, asks a question: Are human beings just meme machines? Well, I would say. Potentially, and a lot of us are unfortunately meme machines. We just pass memes on and we make our decisions and we live our lives based on what we're told. But uh, I, would, I would assume that many of you listeners are not meme machines. You're critical thinkers. A meme machine is like a zombie. 
meme machine is not really present to what's happening in the moment because they're just operating on what they were told and that was based in the past. So uh, you, the difference between being a meme machine and a critical thinker is the difference to me of being a zombie and a, and a real live human being. We become zombified. When we live by memes, we live like zombies. When we live as critical thinkers, where we examine our lives, we examine what we're doing, we examine ourselves. Socrates said, the unexamined life is a life that's not worth living. And what he meant in the year 600 BC or thereabouts was that uh, the unexamined life is the life of a zombie. And unfortunately, that is the lives many of us are leading. And it is not just destroying our individ or the individual life of the zombie, but ultimately it will destroy the life of the culture as well. That's just me on my high horse, but that's my take anyway. All right, speaking of memes, this is from uh, Pop Sugar from the Cleveland, well, uh, Cleveland Clinic Wellness uh, Wellness Center. Cleveland Clinic Wellness Center. Kristen Kirkpatrick, registered dietitian, and I have my problems with registered dietitians, by the way. She says, fats don't make you fat. A dietitian explains how it might actually be the opposite. No kidding. I think this dietitian needs to listen to the bright side because we talk about this all the time. Fats, by virtue of the fact they rev, rev up your system, can actually cause you to lose weight if it's done correctly. Of course, this is about the ketogenic diet, which is a weight loss diet as well as a, a, a brain health diet and a heart health diet and a high performance diet. And, so, and, and in this article, Kristen, uh, Kristen uh, Kirkpatrick and the authors of the article make the same mistake most people who don't understand the body make when it comes to the ketogenic diet. They call it a high-fat, low-carb diet. It is not a high-fat, low-carb diet. It is a low-calorie, high-fat, low-carb diet. That's very important. The trick is to th make the body think that it is starving, but give it some fat. When the body thinks it's starving, it goes into fat-burning mode. And if you give it just a little bit of fat, it will rev up this fat burning system so that you burn up more, you burn more fat calories, you have more energy, and your high energy organs, high energy systems, such as your brain and circulatory system, heart, will benefit tremendously. It's the ideal diet for everything, for everybody. The ketogenic diet, when it's done correctly, that means low calorie. And I very rarely see that low calorie element of the ketogenic diet mentioned when it comes to mainstream descriptions of, or even dietitian descriptions of the value of the ketogenic diet. It has to be low calorie. All right, got one more here and then we'll get your phone calls. This was really interesting. Do you know, I, I noticed that in my practice, uh, more and more younger folks are, are <laughs> complaining about being an anxious, sad, depressed. And so I, I read this article today and it just kind of made sense <laughs> how being sad, depressed, and anxious online became trendy. Apparently, it's a thing now. Trendy emotional distress. That's what it's called on Twitter, on Instagram. It's kind of like a thing, and it's mostly young people who have this thing. This is a study that was based on uh, uh, research that was done on social media. Mental disorders, a glamorous attraction on social media from the Journal of Teaching and Education. Through the last decades, efforts have been invested in spreading awareness related to mental health in general, leading to more complex disorder complaints. This work presents two studies illustrating the glamorization of some mental health diseases on social media and how youth, and it is mostly youth, I've noticed, young people as, as under in 20s, less under the, 25 or, and younger, I would say, youth might be misled into wrong practices in that respect. The study also details the result of focus groups conducted at Consulting Center for University of Balmond, which will, present, which will project the point of view of university students on that issue. So apparently it's a thing to be depressed. Look. If it's a thing, that's not a problem. As long as you're not in con the thing is in control of you. As long as you're in control of the thing. Uh, interestingly, this is really funny. In the article, the, uh, the author of the article quotes a, a book by a guy named James Ball called Post Truth. How bullcrap, and he didn't say bullcrap, how bullcrap conquered the world. That's a book I'm definitely buying. Post Truth. We live in a post truth world. You notice that if you watch the news, you don't know what to believe. It's a post-truth world. I got sick of post-truth. That's why I named my company The Truth. 
I got sick of dishonesty. That, and it's not, just plain, it's not just blatant dishonesty, folks. It's dishonesty that masquerades as the truth. That's what post-truth is. There's always been bull crap. But now we got bull crap that, that promotes itself as not being bull crap. Post-truth, how BS conquered the world. James Ball. All right, got a full line here now all of a sudden, which is a good thing. So we'll get your phone calls. 844-236-6010 is our number. Good morning. Barry, you've been holding on a long time. Greetings, my friend. What's going on? Yes, good morning. Yes, I, I want to, um, you know, I, I really um, like your comments, and I've, I'm almost, I, I value them so much. Uh, and so I, I, you, you always hear people say about um, cancer feeds on sugar. What, what, what do you say? Cancer, all right, so let's real quickly here. Cancer is not cancer. There's no such thing as cancer. Do you know that, Barry? There's no such thing as lung cancer. There's no such thing as gallbladder cancer. There's no such thing as liver cancer. There's no such thing as skin cancer. Of course, I'm being slightly facetious here, but I'm trying to make a point. There's skin cell cancer. There's breast cell cancer. There's ovarian cell cancer. There's liver cell cancer. It's a cellular phenomena. The medical model wants to do this little trick they play, and I, I'm not saying they do it intentionally, they just don't know, to, make, to misdirect us away from the cellular nature of disease. The cell doesn't need much. It certainly doesn't need anything the doctor can provide. And that's why we don't hear about it. So what you had to do for the cancer, if you're going to address it, you've got to recognize its cellular nature. First in the nomenclature, in nominalization, naming it. Don't say you have breast cancer. Say you have breast cell cancer. Now we know we've got to address the cell. A cancer cell is a cell that is in duress. It's overloaded. It's burdened. It's freaked out. It's, it's like a baby that's been stuck in, a, in, in a, a bombed out city in World War II. If you can just picture what that looks like. Imagine like the worst bombed out city in World War II. Picture a baby sitting in the city with no mother, no father, just screaming and crying. It doesn't know what's going on. That's a cancer cell. And we, in our infinite wisdom, extract it or kill it or poison it or x-ray it or radiate it. But really, it's just a cell in duress. So when they say sugar feeds cancer, what they mean is cancer is a cell that has now uh, developed a coping mechanism for dealing with the, the duress that involves it becoming a sugar burner, a sugar eater. Hang on. I'm going to finish this up when we come back from our break, Barry. Got to take a commercial. We are back on the Bright Side Pharmacist. Ben here, 844-236-6010 is our number. Talking to Barry in New Orleans about cancer. No such thing as cancer, but there are cancer cells. And the reason this is an important distinction is because if we think it's just an organ phenomena, we end up just feeling okay taking out the organ. But when we recognize it's a cellular phenomena, we can start to have some control over it. A cancer cell is a cell that does not know what to do. In order for a cell to be a cell, liver cell, uterine cell, ovarian cell, breast cell, it takes a lot of work, Barry. It takes a lot of nutrition. It takes a clean environment. It takes uh, a lot of. It takes oxygen. It takes car other things as well. There are a lot of factors that have to have to be uh, in the in present in the right amounts. It's almost like a recipe or a formula that the soup w within which the cell is sitting has to contain. If that does not happen, the cell freaks out. It doesn't know what to do. If it happens, it doesn't happen for a little bit, it'll just die. But over the course of time, the cell doesn't die. It just mutates. It changes. It shape shifts. It goes back in time to becoming a primitive cell, which is a bacterial cell, and it starts to divide like a bacterial cell, which is to say it no longer cares about being an organ. It no longer cares to be a liver. A liver cell says, screw you. I'm not going to be a liver. You're not taking care of me. You're not giving me oxygen. You're not giving me vitamin C. You're not giving me nutrients. You're, you're making me drown in your poisonous smoke and, and, and overloaded sh uh, too much sugar and drugs and all the other, and chlorine and fluoride and all the other stuff you're making me drown in. So you know what? I'm just going to go off on my own and go rogue. I'm going to divide on my own. And when a cell divides on its own and is no longer a liver cell, it doesn't care about forming little substructures, mitochondria and ribosomes and Golgi apparatus and all the different thousands upon thousands of substructures that are in a cell. It just wants to divide. And it does it using its old time favorite fuel, a bacteria's favorite fuel, which is, guess what, Barry? Sugar. And that's what it means that cancer feeds on sugar. Cancer cells use sugar as their primary fuel because they're suffocated. They're starved and they're toxic. 
So robbing sugar is a, robbing the, the or depriving, I should say, the cell of sugar is a strategy, and we should all be using the strategy because sugar revs up the system anyway, and sugar is considered by the blood after a tiny little bit. It's considered by the body, I should say, after a tiny little bit in the blood as a toxin, and it's got to be stashed away, which it is as fat for most of us. So that's a long way of explaining to you that whole idea of sugar feeding cancer. I hope that explains it and doesn't confuse things. Are we good, Barry? Uh, yes. Uh, if time permits, uh, I have a friend who uh, has uh, MS. Now, yes. I he say something uh, uh, quite a while back, but I kind of came in on the tail of it. Fast. Food control and fast. Get a book called The Walls Protocol. We had Terry Walls on the program maybe a couple of years ago. I'm not sure when it was. A couple of years ago, I think. And uh, she cured herself of MS. She's a medical doctor. She was, you know, mainstream medical doctor. She cured herself of MS doing it she, by listening to the bright side. Now, I don't know if she listened to the bright side, but she might as well have because she did everything we talk about on the bright side. It's called the Walls Protocol, and she made herself a, a very uh, important woman, uh, uh, rightfully so, in the, in the alternative practice field because she lived the bright side principles and, and got all the changes that anybody who lives the bright side principles will get. Terry Walls. W-A-H-L-S. Barry, I got a bunch of calls I want to get to, my friend. Thanks so much for your call. Always appreciate your input. Let's move on to Mark in New Jersey. Good morning, Mark. What's up, bro? My, my health guru, Dr. <laughs> Duke, how Thank are you? You. I, you know what guru is? G-U-R-U. You're your guru, hey, not me. You are, you are the, the health guru. People should be <laughs> listening. We've taken good care of our friends and family over the years with your advice. And good deal. Where in Jersey style. are you? Where in New Jersey? Uh, South, South, South Jersey. Down like what town? What city? Shore. Uh, uh, about? St. Harbor. Okay. You know hey, I'm from New Jersey, hey, right? Cape hey, Bay area. Yeah. I, I grew up in New Jersey. I, I know. You, New Jersey you know, gets a bad area. rap. Undeservedly so. It's New Jersey a, is a, a beautiful, at least parts of it are very, very beautiful. Parts of it, yeah. We don't yeah. go to Camden. <laughs> <laughs> or Newark, that's true. Yeah. All right. So, What's going on? Um, so, Ben, my, uh, my father-in-law came down, um, he, and this came on very, very quickly. He uh, took Cipro for an apparent UTI, and next thing you know, he started in the respiratory distress. And they said, well, you know, this is an acute uh, pneumonitis, and... Yeah, you know, some steroids, and we'll get you back on your feet. It's going to take a little time, and very quickly devolved, and now he's up at uh, Temple Lung Center uh, in Philadelphia. That's They're terrible. Very, just one round of Cipro. Do. Just one round of Cipro. One round of Cipro, and now uh, I've heard of that. It, it, this morning they they told him it's uh, pulmonary fibrosis with connective tissue disorder. Oh, and, I've heard of that. That's what happens and, when you take yeah. Well, um, hmm, that's I terrible. I'm in your wheelhouse as far as... Did he smoke? Does he smoke? Was he a smoker or anything? 30, 30 years ago, he... Was he, was, he, uh, was he healthy in other ways? This, this man, yeah, they just moved down the shore recently, uh, last year. Packed a 3,000-square-foot house himself. Packed it up, moved it, put it all back together at their new home. Ten hours a day in yard work. I mean, this is, this is a man that, you know, that's never terrible. showed a sign... I am very um, sorry. How old? How old is he? Sixty-nine years old. Sixty-nine. Okay, so it's not. I mean, it's rare, but I've heard of it, and not just with yes. Cipro, by the way. Um, it can happen with chemo drugs. Uh, it can happen with uh, um, other other antibiotics. It can happen with uh, methotrexate. That's a cl uh, classic yes. one, and also um, heart, certain heart drugs, in particular, heart rhythmic antiarrhythmic drugs. So it can happen. Uh, pulmonary fibrosis is a reaction to the drug in the, in the bloodstream. The lungs are, are highly perfused. So a fibrosis usually means an immune response. It means a defensive response, a protective response. Now, if it's acute, acute at all it happens, it can be pretty dramatic, and then that's a problem. So what I would be doing if I were him is, uh, first of all, practicing his SDR breathing as much as he can. It may hurt him to okay. do that, but, but he's going to be starving him for oxygen. Do they put him on a, on, a breath, on a breathing machine or anything like that? Oh, uh, yeah, he's on 30 liters of oxygen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and anything you do to, to start working on the di working on the muscles around the diaphragm, working on his own deep breathing, deep breathing, uh, deep breathing techniques. Once you got fibrosis there, it's very difficult, however. Um, anything he could do to minimize the immune response in other ways, that means controlling food intake mostly because that's where immune activity comes from. Uh, and then also you might want to try uh, uh, certain supplements like vitamin E. 
uh, important for lung health, and also uh, N-acetylcysteine and selenium. And then last but not least, you might want to consider injections, or uh, IV, I should say, vitamin C, and IV glutathione. Personally, that's what I would be doing. IV uh, glutath- I, I, ironically enough, these are all things that I put him on as soon as he had respiratory distress. Any, I went, you, I reached right to the, the NAC, selenium. Did you do the IV? Uh, no, we did not. We didn't get, get that Get him on far. some IV stuff, too, glutathione particularly. Glutathione so, is very important for lung health. Yeah, I'd be doing the IV stuff. I'm sorry to hear all that, Mark. That's that's definitely that's a bummer. But there are things you could do, to, if not cure, uh, at least minimize some of the symptomology. I want to get one more call in, my friend. Thank you so much ben, for calling. Real, real Appreciate quick, it. Is, is, uh, is it possible to consult with you off air? Yeah, just send me an email. Ben at ksco.com. Put your phone number there. KS. K-S-C-O. Yeah. Thanks, Mark. Appreciate it, buddy. Thank you. All right. Take care. God bless you. All right, Rhea, you're going to get the last word today. What's going on? Rhea in Japan. How you doing? Hi. Hello. Hey, Rhea. How are you? I'm good. What's going yeah. on? you got about a minute here. Um, I, oh, I have a long question. Um, what's what's, the, what's mom, the topic, you know, the general have, topic? Um, okay. She had ulcerative colitis. And she ha- she was operated on, and she does not have her large intestine. Oh my goodness! Who, who and my is this? question is, a friend of yours? My mom. Oh, your no. mom. Okay. Talked, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know. She, you didn't tell me she didn't have her. Bunch, you didn't tell me that part. And she ha- she's taking a bunch of supplements. And my question is, I switched her to one of uh, a B one hundred supplement. That's a time release form. Uh huh. In yeah. my mom's case, if she doesn't have a large intestine... No, the B1 is... A, the B1, have, the time release on the B1 takes it past the stomach into the intest, the small intestine. So large intestine doesn't really do a lot of nutrient absorption. It mostly absorbs water. There's some, there's some nutrient absorption. Some, I think B12 might be absorbed in the large intestine. But uh, for the most part, it's the small intestine where the heavy lifting is done for absorption. There is still some absorption, though, that takes place in the large intestine. So she might be compromised a little bit. But uh, for the most part, that's not going to be a problem. But why don't you just put her on the Beyond Tangy Tangerine liquid? Liquid. I, I would try the liquid as long as she doesn't get, you know, have problems with too much liquid. Sometimes without a large intestine, you have problems with too much liquid. You'll have to play around with that, but that would be what I would do. Uh, a small amounts of okay. liquid in the Beyond so, Tangy Tangerine. Yeah. Go ahead, real quick. So a time release supplement is not a problem? It depends on where it's designed to be released, but no, I don't think it's a problem. Usually they're designed for the small intestine. Okay. Okay, thanks, Rhea. Have a great day. All right, that's it for now. Thank you for listening to The Bright Side, friends. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Check out our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com for the longevity products. And don't forget about truthtreatments.com for our truth skin health products. Have yourselves a wonderful, beautiful, awesome, spectacular day. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.